We've already compared the ASUS PhonePad with the Google Nexus 7, but the comparisons just won't stop because this is Pocket Now, I'm Anton Dinoy, and you're watching ASUS PhonePad versus Apple iPad Mini video comparison. Let's go check it out. These two tablets couldn't be any more different. Apple has brought a brand new design to the iPad Mini, different to the one on the iPad and more iPhone 5-ish. It is a tablet that many have thought would never come out of Apple's design labs and factories, but it did, and it looks awesome and feels exceptional in the hand. The phone pad is made by ASUS, the company that also made the Google Nexus 7. We've already compared the two Android power tablets in a previous video. The phone pad is more conservative on the design end, but it features something that the iPad mini doesn't have, or the majority of tablets for that matter, an earpiece. You can lift it up to your head and talk like you would on any regular smartphone. Then there's another fundamental difference. Platform, ecosystem size and app selection. Let's compare these two and take a close look at hardware, performance and user experience. Let's start off with hardware. The phone pad packs a 7-inch screen with 800 by 1280 resolution and the PPI rating of 216. It is powered by an Intel Atom Z2420 processor clocked at 1.2GHz with only a single core, backed up by 1GB of RAM. There are 8 and 16GB storage options and some regions will also see the tablet chip with a 3.1MP main shooter on the back in addition to the 1.2MP webcam. Of course, there are the usual suspects like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and GPS, granted NFC is not present. The battery is rated at 16 watt hour, meaning 4270 milliamp hours. Platform of choice, Android. Version out of the box, 4.1.2. The iPad mini is not a powerhouse either, beyond the fact that iOS devices just like Windows phones need less power to deliver a solid performance and user experience. The screen on the iPad mini is larger, at 7.9 inches, with a resolution of 768 by 1024 pixels and 162 ppi pixel density, which is not earth shattering at all. The CPU of choices dated back in the iPad 2 days, an Apple A5 chip which is dual core and clocked at 1 GHz. There are 512 MB of RAM, but storage options include 16, 32 and 64 GB flavors. The webcam on the front is a 1.2 MP unit like on the phone pad, but the back features a 5 MP main shooter without flash. The usual suspects include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS and uh, no NFC as well as a 16.3 watt hour battery, meaning 4381 milliamp hours at 3.72 volts. Platform of choice, iOS. Version out of the box, always the latest, currently 6.1.1. However, the phone pad has a physical earpiece up top so that you can make or take calls just like with a regular smartphone. Yes, a 7 inch one. While the iPad mini also has a cellular version, even 4G LTE support, it lacks the earpiece. Build quality on both devices is solid. However, you're instantly shocked by how lightweight and thin the iPad mini is. At 312 grams and 7.2 millimeters, it is 28 grams lighter and 3.2 millimeters thinner than the phone pad, which means a lot. The bezel on the iPad mini is also slimmer and iOS has a neat way of detecting and ignoring accidental touches. The iPad mini speaks premium. That's not to say the phone pad feels cheap, not at all, especially that the material on the back has been upgraded. We now have the cold to the touch aluminum instead of the sturdy feeling plastic on the Nexus 7. That and the earpiece aside, we're seeing a Nexus 7 twin. Let's take a look at performance. We're comparing apples to uh, Androids here. Different ecosystems, different platforms, different apps. Still, the user experience can only be one, good or bad. Now first things first, it takes the iPad mini 21 seconds to boot up. Compared to that, the phone pad is a tad lazier with its 37 second boot up time, taking 16 seconds longer. For everything else, keep this in mind. 1. We are comparing different platforms and 2. We are talking dual core versus single core here, despite Intel's Android optimization on its Atom processor. Day to day usage results are rather interesting and intriguing. The phone pad puts up a great fight against the iPad mini and even manages to beat it in many cases. There's no clear winner here. We have to call it a tie when it comes to launching applications like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Foursquare, Email, Calendar, Spotify or the browser. If you choose Chrome over the alternative Android browser offered on the phone pad, the iPad mini Safari performance will school the ASUS tablet almost every time. But that's not the tablet's fault. It's Chrome. However, running the Android browser against Safari results, once again, in a tie. Page load times, scrolling and even text rendering is identical to our no-stop watch eyes. 
If the performance is a tie, if single and separate segments are being compared, the iPad mini and iOS offers a more fluid overall system-wide performance. Windows appear more fluidly, menus and animations don't stutter, and the entire tablet's performance is perceived as never lagging. The phone pad does a decent job but occasionally stutters when jumping to the home screen or scrolling lists, like the settings where it occasionally is choppy. Next up, displays. Both screens are IPS LCDs, but the iPad mini is much, much brighter than the display on the phone pad. In terms of pixel density, not only the iPad mini has a lower resolution, but it also has a larger screen, by almost an inch. If you hate seeing pixels, regardless of how long or short your arm is, the phone pad's 216 ppi should be your choice over the iPad mini's 162 ppi. Resolution and pixel density aside, the winner here is clearly the Apple tablet. Brightness, contrast ratio, color reproduction, color saturation, and even black levels are much better than on the ASUS phone pad. Still, ASUS allows you to cheat with an ASUS up its sleeve. The bundled ASUS Splendid app, where you can tweak color temperature, hue, saturation, and turn vivid mode on or off, allowing you to have the best experience tailored to your eyes and liking. Outdoor visibility, too, goes to the iPad mini. In terms of software and user experience, we're going to ask the eternal question, iOS or Android? Luckily, we're not comparing phones, where the answer would have been much easier. iOS is old. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is completely up to you. However, the lack of widgets and the eternal list of icons becomes quickly boring. Android, on the other hand, is made for customization and widgets allow you to really personalize your device. Watch out though, all those widgets will shorten your battery life, and sometimes, if your processor isn't fast enough, like on the phone pad, could take up precious resources. There's nothing, aside from specific OS features, you can do on the iPad mini that you cannot do on the phone pad, and vice versa. So, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the good old cliché. Apple's iTunes App Store simply has a broader tablet-oriented app selection. Of course, Android is catching up quickly, and most of the apps you already use on a daily basis probably have a tablet version already, but the iPad apps just look more refined and fine-tuned. If we stop here, in this particular setup, iOS is the clear choice. But with Android, you can always root and flash and endlessly improve your tablet. Surely you can also jailbreak your iPad, but if customization and hacking is your playground, get the phone pad. At the end of the day, if you need to have an earpiece on your tablet so that you can leave your phone at home, stop right now and go get the phone pad. It's a no-brainer. If that doesn't really interest you, then you should probably take into consideration that the phone pad is cheaper. Our particular 16GB model set us back $333 versus the $459 or Euros Apple asks for the cellular-enabled iPad mini. If you want to go Wi-Fi only, then there's absolutely no reason for you to buy the phone pad. The Nexus 7 is right there, and it's cheap. That's gonna do it for today, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Stay glued to Pocket Now and to our YouTube channel. Our full ASUS phone pad review is coming shortly. Until then, make sure to subscribe to all the usual social media channels and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching. Take care, till next time.